Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for August 18th, 2023. Glad that you are with me. Today is National Couples Day, National Fajita Day, yum, Gold Cup Parade, Green Man Festival, Hawaiian Shirt Day, and Indonesia Constitution Day. Let's go ahead and get started. Jesus says, You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others. Come, Holy Spirit, pour out your blessing in our lives this day. Amen. Our reading for today is from Exodus chapter 19, starting with verse 1. Listen for God's word to speak to you. At the third new moon, after the Israelites had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that very day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. Adonai called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession. Out of all the peoples, Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that Adonai had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that Adonai has spoken we will do. Moses reported the words of the people to, the, to Adonai. Then Adonai said to Moses, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud, in order that the people may hear when I speak with you, and so trust you ever after. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, so our reading for today. Um, they now finally come to Mount Sinai. It was sort of implied before when we when we talked about Jethro, but now officially they are at Sinai. Why that is significant is because when God called to Moses at the bush, this was the first sign. Moses says, you know, God says, I will go with you and, and speak to Pharaoh and all that sort of stuff. And Moses says, well, how will I know that you are with me? And God says, well, you'll come back to this place and you'll worship me. So this is, um, the, it's sort of a bookend, right? Because we've had the, the completion of all the other things that God has said in the strikes against Egypt and their freedom, all that sort of stuff. And now the first promise is fulfilled as they return back to this mountain. And God has something important to say about these people. And let's focus a little bit on this. The words are not used here, but this is the idea of a chosen people. God says, I have, I have, you've seen all the things that I've done to the Egyptians. I bore you on eagles' wings. I shall lift you up on eagles' wings, right? Um, 
So because you've seen all these things, you need to obey my voice. I'm going to tell you some things. There are some ways that you need to be in the world that are going to be different, and they're going to be challenging. And I need you to do them. You need to obey my voice and keep my covenant. Covenant is a sacred sort of promise between two parties. God is going to be entering into a covenant relationship. This uh, covenant relationship was more sort of common in the ancient world. It would be, you know, a formal treaty or a formal contract. The one that we really know is uh, maybe, maybe better is a marriage covenant, right? It is this thing that is made solemnly and it is not to be broken. In fact, we have lots of rules around how you break a marriage. And anyone who has been through a divorce or knows, knows someone who has knows that it's not an easy thing. We could have discussions about whether it should be easier than it is now or not. But the idea here is that this is a sacred thing. It is a covenant. So God says, you will be my covenant people. I am in some ways marrying you and you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. Now you notice what God does not say is, I hate everybody else. That is not what is being said here. And uh, not only here, but but the, the broad sort of scope of scripture is very clear that that is not the case. And in fact, you know, a few days ago, we talked about the Amalekites and sort of the fatwa, the, this idea of this sort of generations long anger and, and um, hatred against this people group. That is so striking because it is so strange and out of character. The character of God is that all the earth is mine. All the peoples of the world are mine, but you, you're going to be this special people. This um, treasured possession is the word here. And then we get to the crux of what it really is, a priestly kingdom, a holy nation. Now let's think about that just for a moment. What is a priest? priest is a person who mediates between God and other human beings. I mean, a God, a divine being, and other human beings. This is something we're, we're familiar with, right? They have a special mediating role. Does that mean that everyone else is terrible? No, it means that everyone else doesn't necessarily have the ability to have a connection directly with the divine. That there are some who are called to a a different way of life, a particular way of being, to be holy, to be separate, so that they can understand God's will and they can mediate that to others. So the idea here of this chosen people, this treasured possession, this priestly nation or priestly uh, priestly kingdom, holy nation, is that they are to be the mediators between God and the rest of humanity, at least for this time. Now, we're going to see that this doesn't necessarily work out as well as they were hoping. And so there will be a priesthood for this priestly nation. Because this whole people is not going to be able to follow the law in the way that they need to. And so there's going to be priests and even a high priest who is going to be called to this special place, this holy place. But the whole idea is that they are to be a mediating place force for humanity. It's a high calling, but it also is one that draws all of the rest of humanity with it. 
The earth is mine and everyone in it, says God. I'm going to bless you and through you all the nations of the world shall be blessed. God says to Abraham, this is the purpose of a chosen and called people. And we're going to begin this process of God is, is calling to these people, inviting them to be this priestly kingdom, this holy nation. Those who will mediate God, who will be the go-between ambassadors for, one might even say, for the living God. So Moses comes and sets, uh, summons all the elders and the people, sets before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him, and the people answered as one. Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. The people are ready to take on this mantle, this position, this purpose of being a priestly kingdom, a holy nation. Now that's going to be complexified. That simple answer of, yes, absolutely we're going to do that, is going to be more complicated because we're dealing with human beings, and we'll see that. But the call is this. You will be this people that is to share, to mediate, to, to, to communicate to others God. The Apostle Paul makes the bold, bold claim that we have been adopted into the family of Abraham. That the true children of Abraham are the ones who have the same faith as Abraham, not necessarily the lineage. And that we are called to be this chosen people. Peter says that we as believers are called to be a priestly kingdom, a holy nation. Not made up of a particular family, but still those who are called to the place of being priests. A priesthood of all believers. A mediation between God and all humanity. Are we in the church, are we better than others? Absolutely not. Visit a church, and you will know that for a fact. Because we're broken, right? We're messed up, just like everybody else. But our role, our purpose, our call is to be a priesthood of believers, a holy nation, those who express what the kingdom of heaven is like. To show forth what God has done for us so that others might become, come into a right relationship with God. To, to get to know who God is. For we who believe in Jesus, it is an expression, a, a, a telling of this good news, this proclamation, this world-changing, life-changing news that Jesus, God, made flesh has now opened the door to humanity. That our high priest, the one who truly mediates for us, is one who is perfect. And at the very seat of the living God. And that we are called as his priests. That we don't need another mediator on our behalf. We are those who can speak to the living God. And stand in the gap between ourselves and the rest of humanity, calling them to enter into the song, enter into this nation and kingdom. We don't always do it. The Israelites didn't always do it. Uh, they failed. 
Spoiler alert. We fail. Spoiler alert. But God has still called us to be a holy nation, a priesthood of all believers. I invite you to take some time to reflect, to consider, to journal, to write, to pray or meditate on your role as mediator, as ambassador for the kingdom of heaven, as the hands and feet of the living God through Christ, those sent out to reconcile the world to God. And when you're ready, we'll join our hearts together in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Help us to recognize you when our neighbors say, I am present. Give us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and strength to serve you this day and always. Amen. We pray this day for the needs of our congregation and community. We pray for Brock, who is having eye surgery. For Jane Ann, who fell this week and has broken her left knee. For Ethan, a friend of Bill's who has strep throat. For the Mayfields and their continued house hunting. For Brianna's friend's mother who is suffering from stage 4 pancreatic cancer. For Tom, a friend of Amy's who has lung cancer that has spread. For Zoe, the granddaughter of Amy who has been at the Mayo Clinic. For Viola with an online request for wholeness and healing. We pray that you would help us to build congregational vitality. Dismantle structural racism. And eradicate systemic poverty. Lord Jesus Christ, we remember our neighbors and we ask ourselves, when did I recognize you? Bless what we have done. Forgive what we have failed to do and make us ready to meet you when you come in glory. Amen. Now let us continue to praise in the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God is with us in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Find us on Facebook and Instagram. Join us on Sunday for worship at 1030, either in person or virtually. At 5 o'clock, we'll have one of the last of our August cool-down nights, learning about the Matthew 25 vision. At 6, we will have our free concert series, Sundays at 6. Again, one of the last ones. 
This week we have Taylor J. White, who is a soprano, singing uh, African-American composers of NOLA and uh, some information about those. Next week will be the St Stephen Minold Quartet playing uh, A Love Supreme in its entirety. Our liturgy today came from the Presbyterian Mission Agency Matthew 25 Worship Resources. Our reading came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. You can watch this daily prayer on YouTube. You can listen to it on your uh, podcast host of choice. You can um, sign up for an email to get both of those sent to you directly. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.